So the Ninja V Plus sounds like an interesting buy. If you own the R5 camera, what this means is that you might be able to record not only 8K ProRes RAW, but also 4K 120 frames per second in ProRes RAW as well. This might also mean that with this combination, you may be able to potentially record these modes without worrying about overheating at all. Before I continue, hit the like button. Go ahead. I'll wait while you do it. What? I didn't earn it yet? Well then hopefully I'm able to entertain you and fill you in enough so that I can earn not only a like, but a sub. Wish me luck. Now I'm going to get into a few things in this video. First, why would people be excited to pick up the Ninja V Plus along with the R5? And second, my opinion on it and let you know why I don't plan on picking up the Ninja V Plus as an R5 owner. So let's get started as to why this is relevant. By the way, as I speak, you'll see me putting together a little backup recording setup of my own. So if you don't know, the Canon R5 is an incredible full frame camera for stills and video. Speaking of the video features specifically, it can record full frame 4K at frame rates of 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. Plus, if you stick with the lower frame rates of 24 and 30 frames per second, you have the option of recording oversampled 4K to get really sharp images. This camera also lets you record 8K at 24 and 30 frames per second with the added option of being able to record 8K RAW internally. Now the well-known downside is that all the modes that I've just mentioned can cause the camera to overheat when recording for long periods of time, except for 4K 24 and 30 frames per second standard modes. So problems do exist, but at least you get all of these recording modes in a camera, where most cameras do not offer all of these features internally. In fact, not even the more expensive Sony A1 can record 8K RAW internally which makes you appreciate that Canon really did pack this camera with a lot of features. I must mention one additional downside. All recording modes, not counting 120 frames per second, are limited to 30 minutes of recording time before the camera stops recording. That in itself is annoying as well, and it's something that we just have to work around when using this camera. So this is where the Ninja V Plus comes in. Now the standard Ninja V can record up to 60 frames per second in 4K, but the Ninja V Plus will be able to record all modes from the R5, including 4K 120 frames per second and 8K in ProRes RAW. Now the standard Ninja V helps overcome the overheating problems that you get with recording 4K 60 frames per second, so it's theorized that you may be able to push the R5 to record 8K for a lot longer than the standard 20 minutes that the camera records internally. Not only that, but you'll be able to record ProRes RAW in 4K at up to 120 frames per second as well. This not only adds options to record RAW in different resolutions for the Canon R5, but it also addresses the fact that many of these modes are near impossible to edit easily on the computer because of the codecs Canon decided to use. Basically, this is the ultimate solution for the R5. If you combine the price of the R5 and the Ninja V Plus, it still ends up being less expensive than a Sony A1. Basically a win for Canon, so why not pick it up? So now here's a second point of my video. Why won't I pick it up? I mean, I just sang its praises, so what's wrong with me? I don't know about you guys, but $14.99 is still a lot of money. I'm still recovering from the trauma of paying all that money that I gave for the R5 itself. This camera isn't cheap, so I asked myself, do I really need this? If so, what body part can I sell to pick it up? I made the decision. I think I prefer keeping both arms and legs instead of picking this up. Why? Because I don't need it. Here's why the benefits are not something I need. Number one, the immediate backup to my recordings can be done for a lot less, though not the same quality. So internal proxies with 8K are already possible with the R5, and the super compressed IPB proxies are really small, high quality 4K files that work wonders. But what about backups for other modes? Though they won't be 4K, I can immediately back up other modes by connecting my camera to my cell phone and pressing the record button on this free app for Android called USB Camera. I won't get 120 frames per second recording either, but I do get a 1080p file at up to 60 frames per second and below as an instant backup on my phone at the bitrate of my choosing via this app. 
It's not super high quality, but in a pinch, it's a backup file for other modes if I need it without spending additional money. But if I'm actually honest with myself, I really don't back up most video files unless it's a very important event. And in those occasions, I'm shooting 8K with internal backup. If it's a longer drawn out event, I will usually bring more than one camera. That's just me and what I do. Anyway, there you go. Those are my thoughts. Do you guys think it's worth getting one? Let me know. I'm curious. Thanks, fam. See you later. Oh, did I get the honor of earning your like or a sub? Hope so. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye.